It's the largest enterprise applications provider in South Africa and one of the top performing shares on the JSC in recent years. It's grown organically and through a number of acquisitions. It has a market cap of 3.6 billion rand, a price to earnings ratio of 15.7 and a dividend yield of 1.7. 3%. Well, as you said, it's the big player in this space. Paul, let's get mm. your thoughts on EOH. Look, what the market loves more than anything else is a secular grower. So a company that's able to deliver rising earnings, and by rising I mean like 25-30% per annum, year after year after year come right, rain, sun or shine, recession, contraction, economic backwardation, company that just keeps going and growing is what you want. And this is one of those that has. And accordingly, it's why you know it comes up as one of the sort of top returners in terms of its total integrated return in recent years. Great company. Yeah, we've seen good re re you know revenue growth um, up what 44% this year and last year. I well, think that's we've certainly not a bad number. No, and I think we've had good stats from 2008. I think it's got a very very strong management team, and it's a very very well known sector in in, in this regard. So. All right, fantastic. So, okay, but let's just understand the nature of the South African market. What you've got here is a uh, a market which is big enough to justify lots of investment, lots of capital spending, lots of systems, lots of world-class IT aspirations on the part of government and on the part of companies. But it's not a big enough market for the global giants to really, really take seriously. So, you know, IBM, the world's largest computer consulting company. You know, they've got a presence here, and they certainly pitch for work here, but they don't necessarily maintain the same kind of office infrastructures they would in Europe. So it is a good market for a company or a group like EOH that can strike relationships with SAP, with Oracle, with, you know, all of the major IT vendors in order to represent them. Now, locally. Travis, let's just look at how the picture has changed. Dimension data, obviously delisting yep. some while back, and then we've seen this focus go on to the smaller IT companies out there. Do we see the in investors taking the likes of EOH, Business Connection, we're going to chat about a little later, more seriously, because Dimension Data is no longer listed? I think we see two things. We see um, an increase into the public um, and private sector, EOH establishing itself, not just in the financial, but looking at the health and, and other sectors. We also see, and I think that it goes across the whole group, we also see another um, demand for Africa. You know, I think Africa is um, 10 years behind to West Africa is, and you see amazing growth in some of these um, emerging African economies like Nigeria, Zambia, and, and whatnot. So I think that is the key. So do you expand into South Africa, or do you expand into Africa? I know EAH has a, a link with the United Kingdom, so they have got growth offshore, the, off the continent, um, but I think that's where the growth lies, you know, getting into their private, getting into the public sector, as well as looking into the, you know, the a African market as such. Uh, Travis referred to it earlier, the risks associated with mm. the public sector work and whether at the end of the day you actually are going to get paid. Mm, look, it is a concern because, you know, having the government as a customer is quite a good thing. And certainly EOH has got a big empowerment shareholding base, so it's like 37%, so they've been able to get in that door. But there are long payment terms and there are often issues around completion. And as a result, you need to have more working capital than perhaps would be uh, preferred. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's the nature of the space. And uh, the capex needs to be there. Everybody's crying about efficiency inside the public sector. So that's one of the ways you address it. And more generally, we finally, finally in this country have got what begins to look like quality broadband, which means you can move more of your application infrastructure into the cloud, data centers, annuity revenue, you know, all of that stuff that they've been talking about for decades is finally kind of beginning to happen. Let's go to Hot or Not on EOH. Travis? I'd have to say Hot. I think it is very um, overpriced at these levels, but I think it's still a good stock. Hot or Not, Paul Turan? Yes, look, it is very elevated, but I'll go with Hot as well. I mean, the fact is they continue to acquire companies and integrate them well, and they're able to just kind of keep rolling it forward, whereas others do purchases and then, you know, have fights and other problems. So, yes, hot on this so one. So, double thumbs up on EOH.